So we have a VR project set up and we can't interact with anything. Kind of sucks. In this video, we're going to go over how to make objects that are interactable as well as all the different types of interactions we can have with them. We'll also touch a little bit on haptic and audio feedback so our VR experiences are a little more immersive. If you prefer a written tutorial, you can find one in the description below. All right, so starting off here, we're going to open up Unity Hub and we're going to go with the project that we were working on last time. All right, and now that it's opened up, uh, we are going to add in something new. So we had spheres on these and I've deleted them and I went ahead and actually made a little GitHub for us uh, right here. You can uh, find this link in the description below and just download the zip. Once it's downloaded, you open it up. Let's see, we'll just drop it over here. And the only thing we really need is the prefabs folder. I'm gonna drag that into here. And now we have just some new hands. They don't look great. Look, they're not, they're not gonna be amazing, but you know what? Looks better than what we had. So just slap the, actually, you know what we're gonna do? Uh, go here and you can just put this into the model prefab for the right hand and then the model prefab for the right hand. Did I say that backwards? Nah, whatever. Uh, and so when you press play, what's actually gonna happen is you can't see it here, but when you press play, it'll actually instantiate these hand models and track it for you. Look, you get the picture. When we, when we play around with this a little more, it'll make uh, a little more sense. All right, so uh, now that we have just swapped these new models out, uh, let's add some things to interact with. Uh, I'm gonna start off by adding a cube to the scene. I'm gonna call it table. I'm gonna zero it out here in positioning on its transform. And that's gonna be too close because our, our you know camera, our origin's there. So let's move this. Uh, let's see, maybe 0.5 up and one over. So that's gonna be, yeah, perfect. So this is gonna be a little table that we can throw things on top of uh, to interact with. So starting off, why not, I don't know, make a sphere and we'll call it ball. Look at that, super creative. And then zero that out again and do the same thing. We're gonna move this over a bit, move it up. And that's pretty massive. That's gigantic, actually, holy crap. Um, let's let's shrink that down a little bit. Let's see, what would be a good size? I think 0 0.2. Yeah, there we go. That's a little better. That's a little better. And to make this interactable, all we have to do is add interactable, XR interactable, let's see. Yes, XR grab interactable, there we are. And you'll notice here I actually added a rigid body. So this component's required for us to be able to use XR grab interactable. And honestly, we could just start up our scene right now and start interacting with this. But I wanna go over a few things before we get into that. Starting off, uh, I want to change the color of this ball. So I'm gonna go in my materials folder and you'll see here I've already made a few materials uh, just to change the colors on this. So slap this on and sure, I'll show you really quick. If you don't know how to make a material, I uh, just add a new material there. You can change colors here, boom, boom, boom. And I just like having a nice flat color. So I lower the smoothness down, look at that. And you can just boom. That's how you make material. But that's not what this video is about. All right, back to this. So slapped a new material there. And I'm doing that because I'm going to make two more copies of this. So control, control C, control V. There it is. We'll call you ball two and ball three. And with that, I'm going to move ball two over here 
and ball three over here. Let's make sure we give them different colors. And the reason I'm doing this is because we're going to explore the uh, different different types of uh, movement type that you can have with XR Grab Interactable. So if you see here, you have movement type and we can drop this down and we have three different ones. And each one is fairly different from each other. So instantaneous just pretty much means if you're interacting with this object, it's going to instantly attach to your hand and track with it. You know, that it's not gonna do any physics or anything. It's just going to act as if it was attached to your hand or if it was your hand. Uh, then for this one, we're going to put on kinematic. And with kinematic, what you'll notice is when you're moving an object around, you know, it's not instantaneous. It's not mapping perfectly. Instead, there's a little bit of a lag to it. It looks a little, I don't know, jaggedy when you move it around and that's because it's applying physics to it as you're moving it. Uh, but the interesting thing is it will be able to pass through objects that don't have a rigid body attached to it. So like say you had a bat and you're hitting against like a mesh, like a wall or something. If that wall doesn't have a rigid body, it'll actually pass through it. And last we have this pink ball that we're gonna do velocity tracking. And with velocity tracking, what you'll find is that it's it's a lot like uh, kinematic, and it will, uh, you know, kind of have lag and, uh, you know, not not perfectly mapped to your map or map hand, uh, and it it does a better job of simulating what it feels like to apply force to an object. So it's super good to use when you're doing something like opening a drawer and you want to apply that kind of physics. The, the drawer you'd want to add velocity tracking onto it, right? You want to be able to pull that door open or that drawer. And, you know, if you have physics pulling it quick, you want the drawer to continue to kind of have that weight to it. So that's typically what that's used for. And uh, not only that, but when you are interacting with this, uh, like a velocity tracking object, it's going to interact and run into anything or collide with things, even if they don't have a rigid body. So, uh, you know, unlike the kinematic object that, you know, will ignore meshes or colliders uh, if they don't have rigid bodies, this one will interact with literally everything no matter what. So super important to remember that. All right, so now that we have our interactables in the scene, it is time to talk about our controllers and the types of, not interactables, but interactors that we can have. And the first one we're gonna talk about is the XR Ray Interactor, which, great news, it's already done. Uh, that's what already comes attached to our right and left hand controllers. And you'll see all the components needed for that here. Uh, starting off the XR Ray Interactor, uh, you have the line renderer and the XR Interactor line visual. And so you'll need all these components for this one to work. And typically the XR Ray Interactor, you'll, you'll probably be familiar with it in games. It, you use it for teleporting. Uh, sometimes you can use it to interact with objects from apar afar, you know, have them teleport to your hand. Um, a few things I do want to point out uh, with this as we're going over it is, let's see here, starting off is force grab. So this would allow you to grab things from afar. So if the line lines up with an object, you'll see it'll highlight uh, and you can press the grip button, it'll fly over to you. And then you have this one called anchor control. And what anchor control allows you to do is if you're holding an object, if you use the thumbstick, it'll allow you to kind of make the object, uh, you know, go away from you or come closer to you. It's kind of weird. Uh, I'm sure you can make a fun game out of it, but you know, I just, uh, I don't know. It's, it's not a normal interaction. And the last thing I wanted to point out is right here. Um, so if you don't have any animation set up for your hands, like we, we, we haven't set that up yet. In a different video, I'll cover it. But right here, we can hide controller on select. And this is like a quick and easy way of, you know, not breaking immersion 
with your your interactables. So instead of like having the object attached to your hand in a clean way, when you select this, your hand will just disappear and the object will just appear in your hand. And yeah, yeah it's just a quick, easy way of getting something done and getting it out. And I've seen published games use this, so it's, it's a very valid way of interacting with your object. And again, one last thing to make sure we do is since we're not animating things or uh, attaching objects properly to our hands yet, uh, just select hide controller on select. That way it doesn't look so funky. And yeah, now we have a direct interactor as well as a line interactor. And we can press play and try things out here and see what's a little funky or not. And so one thing you'll notice as we are playing around here is we're not really getting a lot of feedback while we're interacting with with the world and it's really important in virtual reality or really any game to constantly be giving the user feedback and immerse them and let them know that things are happening and so how you do that in virtual reality is haptics and audio all right and so to add uh, audio and haptic events to our controllers and our audio it's super simple uh both the xr ray interactor and the direct interactor have audio events and haptic events and so i'm just gonna do it on the xr direct interactor and you go in here and you can on select entered so that's like you know you're clicking the grip and you can add an audio clip here and i don't have one in the project so i'm going to make one really quick i like to use uh bfxr uh to produce really quick audio it's nice it's a free resource i'll i'll throw the link to the website in the description below if you want to download and try it out and yeah super simple you just yeah that works right you can pick coin Make it a little softer with triangle, sure. Export the WAV file, yeah. And I am just gonna just slap it onto the desktop. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. Um, let's see, I will throw it into the project. I should probably make an audio folder. Nice to keep things organized. And there we go. And so I'm gonna go back to my right hand controller and there it is yes so go into the audio right hand controller where are you hiding and drag it in there so when we select one of these objects now uh it'll play that little sound for us and then for haptic you know these are going to be your hands vibrating a little bit uh you want to you know typically let the player know that they've hovered over something they can interact with and so duration is going to be for how long it goes you know, we don't want to do like 30, 30 seconds. That's ridiculous. But, you know, a qu quick little vibration and say, hey, like this thing's happening. So like 0.25 seconds. And then I believe the intensity goes all up to one. But, you know, like just for hovering, you know, it's just like it is a little reminder. So we could try 0.25 here as well. And then when they've actually selected, you want it to be a little more aggressive. So... Uh, 0.5 duration and let's do 0.75 and so we can go back into the project now press play and see the different interactions we're having and when the audio plays and compare it to the left hand and see how you know what what's the difference of having these feedbacks and how how much more immersive that makes it and you can see here, uh, as I grab with my right hand, you know, it plays that little audio. Uh, and since I didn't put it into the left hand, you know, it's it's not doing any of those things. And it, it's, you know, it's just, it's easy, it's quick, and it just adds that little bit more polish that you want to have inside of your projects. All right, and with that, we can now make interactable objects and play with different types of interactors. Um, I'll be coming out with another video this week, so 
Uh, in that video, I'll be covering how to fine tune interactable objects so they look like they're mapping to your hand properly and not just, you know, clipping right through them and apply a little physics to them. So, you know, if it's a ball, it bounces. And if it's a brick, well, it hits the ground. And that's it. All right. Bye-bye.